Blessings, everybody. Sending you a big, giant hug from here at the Glastonbury Abbey, and it's actually really special for me because this is the first time that I've been back to the Abbey in almost a month, just, you know, going through my knee injuries and finally being able to walk around again. It's such a, a beautiful homecoming back into the sacredness of the energy of this place and how much this place is encoded to the Christ light and to the Christ lineages and everything that goes in with Yeshua, with Brother Jesus. And lately, one of my biggest passions and my pursuits is diving into the language of Aramaic. And for a lot of you who don't know what Aramaic is, Aramaic was the original language that Yeshua, Jesus, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene would have spoken. It's what the Essenes would have spoken. And to me, it's such a truly beautiful language. And it's very similar to a language like Sanskrit, where just in the vibratory kind of essence of the words there and what they can mean, the Aramaic words weave this like rich tapestry, this rich kind of landscape in which you not only get the language and the words itself, but you get the vibration, you get the transmission of the words. And so usually what I do, you know, is whether I learn phrases or I kind of learn Aramaic words and then slowly integrate them and take them in. One of the most beautiful and profound words I've come across since I've studied is the word that Yeshua and Mary Magdalene and what the Essenes would have used to describe love. And really, I've just been sitting with it all day because it's been such a beautiful transmission just to receive their word for love. So their word for love would be Rahoma, Rahoma. And it's beautiful because it's a composition of three different Essenes wor Essene words merged together to create this idea of love. So Rahuma, what it means is you start with Ra, which then would have been translated as an emanation or the shining forth of heat and light. And then you have Hum in the middle, which this sound was what they would have originally used to describe the womb, or the center place of your being, the still center point of your essence, and then Ma at the end, the mother, the great mother, the cosmic mother. So when you put them together, Rahum Ma, what you're saying is love to them represents the emanation or the shining of the light from the womb of the cosmic mother. It's like, oh, how beautiful is that? That's the way that they would imagine love, is that to them, love was this beautiful image of the primal divine light coming from the womb void of the cosmic mother. And you could always tap into that love frequency. You could always tap into that essence when you would conjure love. You would conjure that divine source connection to the cosmic mother and the womb. And to me, it's just so incredible and so beautiful that I just felt I had to come on here and share that with all of you just so that you have the opportunity to really connect in with what Aramaic is, especially if you've never heard of Aramaic. You know, a lot of people just think Jesus spoke English and all these scenes used to speak English, but they had their own rich dialect that in it carried such potency and such magic. And the other reason why I'm really excited to dive into Aramaic and learn how to actually start translating Aramaic for myself is because a lot of times when the original texts, you know, the original accounts of these beautiful Essene brothers and sisters when they were translated into Greek, one of the things that happened is Greek doesn't have some words that would have been spoken in the Aramaic language. So they were kind of this temporary, not quite so fulfilling translations of some of the words. And so some of the magic would be lost and some of the magic was actually mistranslated. So it's really important that we go back to the source, the language, the sound, the beauty that these people would have spoken, the way they would have communicated to each other. And then to get in there and actually see what they were trying to say and what they were meaning. And from what I've seen so far, rich new understandings and definitions and translations of the words of these holy men and women are coming out. And I can't wait to bring my own version out too, which hopefully I'll be able to share with you once I have it too <laughs> understood to a sufficient degree. But yeah, I just felt really called to come on here and share this idea of what mother you know, represents to their idea of love, you know, as we're slowly reconnecting to the divine feminine, to our mother source. And especially for me now, as I'm going through this big cleanse and healing my own mother wounds, to get back into that idea of love. And again, the Aramaic word for love, Rahuma. So again, it's the essence or the emanation of light coming from the cosmic mother's womb. So yeah, I hope that reaches all of you in a beautiful space. And you can each translate that in your own way, because of course, we all bring out beautiful translations. And that was one of the beautiful parts of when Yeshua would speak and other great men and women of these scenes. The way they would speak would be in a very simple way. Yes, poetic. Yes, beautiful. But they'd speak in a way that when their words, and really the words were just carrying images and transmissions, when these transmissions would reach you, 
your then, your essence, your being would then get to translate them and filter through them in your own way, creating your own relationship to what was being spoken about, and especially to the divine. So that's the beautiful part of these transmissions, especially as they were spoken within the Essenes, is that, yes, you could translate it as best you could to a one-to-one -one ratio. You know, this word means this, but really it's an invitation into a process of when these words are spoken, like, love rahumma, when that gets spoken, how do we receive it? How do we integrate it and what's our translation that we put on it? And a lot of the things that the Essenes would do is they would see that knowledge was always structured in consciousness. So depending on how expanded you were or how deeply you took you know, the meanings and the essences and the translations means you would be able to derive and end at different variations of what was being spoken. So something could be spoken to one person at one point in their life and then as they would grow, evolve and mature, and they would receive the same spoken language at another point in their life, they would be able to actually bring out new parts of it or understand more facets of what was being spoken. So really the, the depth of transmissions and the depths of the translations were really based on our own individual understandings and how much we've had our own self mastered and how expanded our consciousness is and our wisdom. So the language then grows, which why I love Aramaic so much is because it's a language that grows and evolves with us. So the deeper, again, we take our relationship with Aramaic and with these words, the deeper and the more rich our understandings of them can be. And this is why the Essenes are such a beautiful people to me, is because they saw that, that it wasn't static, that there was no authority in truth, that truth would evolve with us and that we could continuously bring new ideas and understandings through with it. So yeah, thank you guys for getting to, to receive this, you know, especially this one word, love, rahumma. And then I have a feeling I want to start sharing more about Aramaic, Aramaic and my journey with it and kind of yeah, maybe add some new understandings to who Yeshua was, who the Essenes were, and maybe some of the core principles that the Essenes would be bringing through. <laughs> Love you guys and hope you're having a beautiful day.